Hello coders, I'm Adam and this is Gosu Coders. Today we're talking about a JavaScript game framework. Let's get started. Alright, today we're going to be exploring ContraJS. It's a very simple canvas based JavaScript um, game engine, game library, however you want to call it. Uh, super small, download the entire thing, it's 13 kilobytes. You can also pick individual sections of it to download depending on the features you're needing. I ran across this because it was made for a game competition where you make a game under 13 kilobytes using JavaScript. I'll link that below. Anyway, I wanted to take a look at this and look at three major things. So the first one, what's it like to set up? How hard is it to get up and running? The second thing is I want to look at some basic features because I've got a game idea that I'm hoping to share with everyone. And these are the main things that I'm worried about right now. So I wanted to see how hard it is to render anything. So that could be just a simple square of a certain color or it could be an actual image. But remember with 13 kilobytes, you can't really use too many images. I wanted to understand how mouse clicks work. What happens when I click a specific sprite? Can I pick up on those events? And finally, I wanted to get good understanding how the, frame, um, the game loop actually works. And then the final thing, I wanted to do all this in about 30 minutes. So I needed to come up with a game idea. So I racked my brain and I'm like, all right, years ago, I used to be really big into StarCraft II. And what mattered a lot to me was how fast and how accurate I could move the mouse around. So I decided... Let's just build a very simple game that pops squares up on the screen and tracks how quickly you can click them. So let's, let's go do that. And as you can see, this doesn't look that flashy, but in the top left you can see we have the best score and the current score. And you'll see little squares pop up about every three seconds. I can show you how that gets tweaked. We're going to jump into the code a little bit here and you can get an idea of how simple this is actually to work with. So let's get started by setting up Contra. So you can go to their website, and I'll link that below, and you can select the features you want to use. Their documentation is very good, but it's also very simple because it really is a simple library. And you can see that there's a couple features in here that are important to us. So if we just pick those and we download that, it would be much less, but for the sake and for the ease of this demo, I'd recommend just downloading it all if you're following along, just so you're not forgetting anything. The quad tree, which is one that I think is also pretty cool, you can use that for like collision. Um, some of the other ones are pretty self-explanatory, but if you don't understand what they are, over here on the left side of the screen, they actually point that you know you can go read about it. Once you have that all set up, you can create your HTML page, and your HTML page is very basic. So I'm going to show mine over here on the left and you can see that I've got one single canvas item here. I've done a little bit of styling to make the sizing and whatnot look better, but nothing really that major. And I also did some absolute position text just so that I could actually overlay text over the canvas. But don't really worry too much about that. You can copy this word for word if you want. I'm going to have it up here on the video. Um, and what, where the meat of it really goes is when we get over to the JavaScript file. So we start very simply with just calling contra.init. And what we're passing in there is basically the ID of the canvas. So if you don't put an ID in there, it's going to try to find the only canvas or whatever first canvas it can find on the page. Very important. So if you have multiple, you're going to want to init them with the ID. Uh, the next thing I did... It's actually created like a game object. Um, so I've got this function game here with a couple different areas in it that I think I want to call out. The first one basically is a function that creates a square that shows up in random places on the screen and then also responds to a mouse event, which is one of the things that we wanted to do, and changes its color to green if you click on it. Tracks the time, determines if it's better than your best time, so very simple logic. Finally, the, the next function that you're going to look at here is going to be setting up the game loop. So the game loop is something that we wanted to look at. 
The game loop is actually really simple. So you register a function, and then in that function, you can do whatever you want. You can also get like an elapsed time. There are some other parameters that you can actually get if you read the documentation where you can set different frame rate. I actually, just from a, a crazy test, I left this running for 48 hours to see what it would do. And it was insane the number of boxes I had, but it used very little memory. It still ran very smoothly. So just imagine how many boxes are spawned if you run 48 hours and they're spawning three seconds apiece. Finally, below that, if you see that I'm actually making that, um, that object, the game object, and then calling the function that sets up the game loop. So I've got it all like set up in a way that's very easily reusable if I wanted to. But again, I only wanted to build this in 30 minutes, right? So I had 30 minutes to actually come up with this. Very simple, very easy. Um, I'd be very curious to see if you guys have ever messed with Contra JS. And I am going to post a couple links below to Contra JS and to the JavaScript 13K challenge. I would love for you guys to participate in this, and Contra JS is a good way to do that. All right, guys, I hopefully that has been fun for everyone. Please leave me comments below if you're excited about Contra, if you've built anything with Contra, what you think of Contra. I'm going to be trying to rack my brain and come up with a very simple game idea that I can build in like maybe four hours with some actual art assets in there. And if you have any ideas, please post them below. Anyway, I'm Adam. This is Gosu Coders. Check back tomorrow for cool videos on interview tips, coding tips, technology in general. Have a great day, guys, and keep coding.